Hi, I'm Kathy from Eclectic Images and welcome to a bit of Crafting with Kathy. In today's card, we're going to do a great smooshy background. We love those. Getting ink everywhere and then we're going to do a bit of watercolouring with the same inks just to show you a couple of different techniques that you can do with the same sort of inks. So you could do this with any dye inks, but the ones I'm going to be using are some from the Catherine Puller Spa range. Now our stamp that we're going to use today is the Mandala Sun and the inks, I'm going with some sunny colours which is because it's so cold here today I thought we needed some sunny colours. So we've got Orange Peel, mand Mandarin Spice and Rouge and I'll be using Versamark ink for some embossing. We'll be embossing in the Ranger Marigold and using Cotton Blend cardstock. So let's start doing some crafting. So my first thing is just to create this smooshy background. And what I'd like is, oh actually no, I'm going to emboss the sun on it first so that we can see where we're going to be doing everything. So let's get our Versamark and we've got our embossing powder ready and our bit of catching paper. Okay, ink your stamp up thoroughly. And then just checking that I've got it up the right way. Pop it onto our paper. I'm just trying to make sure that I've got the beads nice and parallel with the edge of the card. So good press down over the whole stamp. Lift up and pop our powder on. And then just giving a fine brush, we'll just tap it down a bit. Tap the side, flip it over and give it a good tap on the back. And that should get rid of any excess bits. I can see, I'm just trying to make sure that this can be seen in the camera. I can see a few bits there and just a few up there, bit of excess ones that we don't want. So we'll just take those off, put a tap on the back and that looks pretty good. Now I also want to put the saying in with this one. It comes with two sayings, be someone sunshine and smile. So we're going to pop be someone sunshine in here as well. Now I'm cheating a bit that I probably should stop and emboss and heat that one before I do anything else to it. Uh, but I'm not, so I'm just being careful not to knock that embossing as I'm doing this extra bit of stamping. Okay, lift straight up. Again, pop our embossing powder on. Make sure it's covered the whole area. Tap on the side, flip it over for a tap on the back, and I can see already that's probably a thumbprint down the bottom there. Rightio. Now, all that excess embossing powder goes back into your jar. Whoa, Matthew's having to zoom around with the camera today. I'm a bit all over the place, aren't I? Okay, lid back on our embossing powder, lid on our ink pad, and we're ready to heat. I'm going to start heating a bit on the back of the card, just warm everything up. Helps to stop the card buckling so much. And then when I come around to the front, it'll emboss nice and quickly. So I can just pass it across, just watching for that shine to happen. There it goes. So marigold is just a gentle gold colour, not quite as strong as a traditional gold. A bit more of a yellowy gold. But very pretty and it's going to work so nice with the spa colours that I've chosen for this card. Okay, now I'm just going to look at that across the light, make sure I've got no dull spots, looking that it's all nice and shiny, and it is. So we are ready to go on to our next bit. And that I'm going to use my craft mat here. I'd like on the card to have it a bit lighter where the stamping is and then darker around the edge. So I'm going to put a bit of orange peel in the middle and then pop mandarin spice to either side of that and a bit of rouge to the outside of that too. Probably not as much. Let's give our card a spritz and then we start smooshing. So lay your card down and just see what happens. 
And of course we can dry the card and keep on smooshing until we keep getting more and more colors happening. Or we can just go, hey, that's pretty cool, just like that. Um, let's put them on the bottom edges though. I'd like to build up, on this particular card, often I just want a sort of splash of watercolor in it, but this time I actually want to get the whole background of the card inked up. So we're going to keep popping it into those colors until I've got all that background card covered. And of course, it's going to get all over your fingers as well, and that's all fine. Now, can anyone tell where I initially put all the different colors? No, but that's all right too. Okay, now I can give that a little bit of a dry, and then we can actually pop it back into the inks again. So we've got some nice smooshing and patterns happening. Let's give this another spritz. Just liven up those colours again. And see if we can get, where there's a few spots where there's like too much of one colour, I'll pop it back in and see if I can get some more patterns coming through. You can wipe it, you can smoosh it. That's better. Now I've still got a bit down the bottom there that's not covered. So let's smoosh that through some colour as well. You're just having way too much fun. I am, aren't I? Isn't it cool? Let's just a smoosh. Okay, now let's clean up our mat. And I'm just going to use my paper towel just to take a bit of colour out of there. And we'll get our bling spray, our Colour Blast bling metallic spray. Give it a good shake until there's no gold or no metallic sitting in the bottom of the the bottle and then just give it a good spritz over the top. So this is going to give us a lovely metallic sheen everywhere. And now we're going to let that dry. Okay, so let's clean up our mat again because we've now put gold everywhere. You could create two or three backgrounds at the same time with this because you'd, once you've done the gold spritz, if there's still some colour there, you could smoosh another card in. But what I've got is, I've actually got one that I've prepared earlier. So it's all, the background's already dried on this one, so we can start getting on with our painting. So with our painting, I'm going to use the same three colours, but with our water brush, add a lot more depth. Now, I could put the colours onto my craft mat, and I sometimes do, but it, I am quite likely to also then put my arm into those. So today, with these strong colours, I'm actually going to use an acrylic block, which I'll just bring that into shot so Matthew can see it. So we'll put some of our lighter colour, which is our orange peel, then the mandarin spice, and then some of the rouge. Maybe a lot of rouge. <laughs> okay, and here's our card, and I'm going to use my medium and my fine water brushes, just making sure that's nice and clean. And we're going to add some of the softer colour. But it's still going to be stronger when I'm painting with it than what it was when we were smooshing the background. Clean my brush. And we can do anywhere where I want the colour to be deeper. I'll probably use my finer brush. I'm just going to let that bleed out into those other bits. Might leave that layer soft and then come in with a medium layer. So what I'm wanting to do is actually build up um, quite a graduation of colours. Mm, no, that doesn't quite describe what I'm thinking of. I'm thinking I want to go from dark to light to, to, to dark again. So that you, you really see your colours standing out from each other. But because we're watercolouring, even with the embossing, we may get a little bit of bleeding from one colour to another. And that's okay. So I'm going to pick up some more of that rouge and actually bring it into these little spots, which will make the Mandarin Spice stand out. So sometimes it's nice just to do a quick watercolour wash over something, but sometimes it's nice to actually take a little bit more time and place the colours more carefully 
so that you end up with um, a more precise, I was gonna say precise blend, but we're actually trying to not blend the colors too much here. I'm trying to keep them to their own areas, but the overall effect is going to be this going from light to dark and light to dark. So I'm letting the rouge be quite strong. I'm not trying to blend that out at all. And you'll notice I just keep turning my card around so I can butt that edge of the water brush right up to the edge of the embossing. Okay, now, cleaning my brushes off and I'm deciding what color I want to do next, whether I want to go to the really soft orange peel or whether I want to go mandarin spice. I think we'll go some orange peel, just for these little bits here. And I know I said I was going to use the fine brush for the stronger colours, but this is such a small area that I'm doing that I've gone back to the really fine brush, even though this is the lighter colour. And I'm trying to be careful not to pick up colour from the other areas. Like I'm trying to be careful not to go into that area at all, because otherwise the stronger colour will just blitz this orange peel. You could, of course, do with something like this where there is levels, you could actually colour one area, skip the next one, colour the next one, so that way you've got time for the middle ones to dry before you get back to it. So we could do that, we could do the orange peel out here. And of course, from doing the smooshy background, Although we've got the precise colouring, you're still going to get some patches of that background colour coming in, which is going to make it really interesting. Nearly there. There we go. Okay, so now let's come in with the Mandarin Spice, the middle colour. And fill in this area. <laughs> One of the trickiest things is keeping a bit of an eye on your acrylic block so that you pick up um, the colour that you want because you can easily forget, in fact if I put on the white paper it's a bit more obvious, you can easily forget which colour you've put where. And the other thing that's going to happen is we're going to pick up, even though I'm working with Mandarin Spice, it's going to pick up some of the other colours that are on that background blend. So it may change a bit as we go around. In other areas where there's no background colour, you're going to get the true Mandarin Spice colour showing through. Now, of course, you can spend as much time as you want to, to if you've got a mandala that's very complex, to pick out layer after layer. Um, I'm trying to not spend too much time on it because it's a bit boring watching someone else watercolour. But we could certainly, if you had something that was more complex, you could certainly spend a lot more time on your blending. Okay, let's go back to our orange peel and I'm just gonna pop that in these little diamonds here and then build out the rouge on the outer edge. That one is not going to look pale because it already had a bit of red from underneath it, but that's all right. Now let's pick up the rouge. And give yourself some bold color around the edge. And in fact, to make the embossing stand out even more, I'm going to go outside the mandala a bit with that rouge as well. And just use my other water brush just to make that bleed a bit, bleed it into the background and that's going to make the rest of the mandala really pop. So paint it on the, the spine there 
and then paint a little bit in the middle that I blend out. As we listen to the, the dog's little pitter-patter as she walks across the room. She's trying to see why we're all working and why someone's not actually giving her a cuddle. Just like that. Now that's got a lighter area of card there, so I'm just going to clean my brush and just put some clean water in there, just so I don't lose that, but I still get the blending happening. And I think this is starting to look quite good. I'm really liking it. It's funny when you have a plan in your head of what you're going to do, and sometimes it works out better than you thought. Now that's smooshing out great. And then we'll have a look at, oh, <laughs> I didn't emboss the uh, the saying on this one. I was gonna say then we'll have a look at the saying and see if it needs a bit more color around it. But we might have to go back to the other card to do that. And I think if we came in at the end and just added, you could add liquid pearls or stickles, but something just to all the little gems or just a bit of glossy accents. Something like that would really pick those out well. I was going to say nearly there and then realised I'm about halfway. <laughs> Let's just keep adding more, add out a bit of smooshy colour in there. But you can see how relaxing it would be just to play with a card like this and play with a combination of the precise colouring, but with some smooshy, flowy ink colours as well. And by embossing first, your embossing is going to resist those watercolours and still stand out. Now we're over halfway. Yeah, let's smoosh two of them at one go. Let's smoosh some water into it, smoosh some water into it. Yay! I really like it. It looks like it's really exploding, doesn't it? It's totally up to you how much you let it smoosh out. Um, I'm being guided a bit here by the background. If there's more background colour, I'm letting it smoosh out for more. And if there's a bit less, I'm pushing it back in a bit. Now, I am reloading the brush each time for the spines because I want the colour to be quite dark on those. So if you're not sure, clean your brush off and get some clean water on it so that you can, you're can you not mixing more colour with it. Otherwise, sometimes it just keeps dragging and dragging. So you've got to clean your brush and just push it back a little bit. Okay, oh, last one. And yeah, I think that would be enough colouring with just then adding in some glossy accents. Some glossy accents over some of the um, the patterns would look really well, good as well. Let's bring our other sample in. So you can see on this one that the, the wording, the sunshine, isn't standing out too much. So that's where adding in some darker colour around it is going to make that lettering pop a little bit more. So again, putting some colour on and then putting some water on. Let's move that one where you can see it. Moving some water in there just to smoosh that out into the background. And suddenly, as you can see from there to there, that lettering pops out. So if I do the same on this word. So this isn't any precise colouring. This is just 
<laughs> smooshing again. It's just ladling a bit of colour on. I think we need some more words here. Uh, random placement. And then definitely smooshing with our water brush. Okay, I'm not happy with that area there. Can you see there that's a bit too much of a line? So I'm just going to smoosh some more water in there until I get that looking really soft and just being, so it just becomes a part of the background. So you can see there that now that word stands out a lot more. Now the last thing that we, apart from things like glossy accents and stickles or pearls, whatever you want to add to it, with the background being dry, the last thing that I would like to do with this is actually then come in with a brush and some of the rouge ink and just deepen off the outer edge of the card. So I'm just going to grab a brush and just add some more depth there. It'll just make everything else stand out more. This is a great colour. This card is a bit out there for me because I'm not normally a reds and oranges person. I tend to go more for the, the pinks and the aquas and the purples. So it's good for me to step outside my comfort zone and have a go with some other colours and go, wow, I actually really quite like that. I'm just going to add a bit more depth because I'm liking it so much. Let's come to this top corner and add a bit more on. So once you've got a bit of colour on, if you go, so when I start, I'm off on the scrap paper and then just sort of working on. But once I've got a bit of ink there, if I want to build up more colour, I'm coming directly on and just adding that extra depth there. And of course, then sticking my finger in the ink pad. I will wipe that off on the scrap paper and put the lid on this ink pad before I actually stick my whole elbow into it. And let's bring our card forward to give you a bit of a look. So that's some really pretty smooshing and blending. I'm just checking out if I've got any glossy accents here because I think I could add a little bit more to that. So while Matthew's giving a nice close up, let me just see if I've got some glossy accents that I can add in. Hasn't it? While I'm trying to find out what I've got here. Okay, so we've got some glossy accents and we've got some glitters. So I'm just thinking for all in gold tones, maybe just a little bit of goldenrod or... What colour should we go with? Ooh, a bit of rose gold could be nice in with that, couldn't it? Okay, so this is where I had a plan and now I've started going, ooh, let's add to the plan. Luckily, the... Uh, glossy accents and the stickles weren't that far away. So let's just, now I usually give my stickles and liquid pearls a bit of a squeeze out onto my scrap pad just to make sure that they're really flowing before I start trying to do something with them. And that way I don't suddenly get an air bubble and a blob happening onto the card. So I'm picking up all those little gems not quite so happy with that one that blobbed a bit so I'm just going to use my brush just to lift that off a little bit. It would have helped if I hadn't used a blue brush. Let's put a bit of colour back in there. Smoosh it out with everything else. There we go. Okay now our glossy accents. This is going to be fun. So I'm picturing, again, give a bit of a squeeze, make sure we've got it flowing. I reckon this panel through here is going to look great with that bit of shine and dimension. So Glossy Accents is awesome. You can use it as we are here to add that 3D quality and add that beautiful shine. You can also use it as an adhesive for petals and flowers. You can do just little drops, so you could do like little um, raindrops onto a, if you're doing a flower or leaf, you can just add it like raindrops. 
So I'm just picking out a few spots. And then I'm going to come back in with that glitter and do a little dollop of glitter right in the middle there. Then just check that. I've got no air bubbles. Okay. Now that to me, it looks more like a finished card. Bit of shine, bit of glitter. Let's bring it forward so Matthew can have a look, nice close up look. And can you see that glitter shining? And see that's 3D. Do we need to change the angle, Matthew, so you can sort of see the, the glossy accents? Yeah. Is it? Excellent. Okay, so that's a lovely smooshy card. Lots of fun. Um, as I said, when you're when you're doing the smooshy backgrounds and you've got all that ink on your mat, it's a great chance to make several backgrounds and you can spritz them with different metallic sprays and things and come up with some different effects. But I hope you like having a go at this one and um, have a try at doing both the backgrounds and some more precise water colouring. So thank you very much for being with us today and we'll see you again next time.